Hi everyone, Cody here. Now, some of you may recall that on my channel I've posted videos about mercury and specifically mercury necklaces that I've been making and selling. Here's uh, some samples of the stock that I have currently. I got about a milliliter of mercury in each of them. I think it's a good idea for me to post a video about cleaning up the mercury in case one of these breaks. This is something that I've been kind of afraid of. You know, I sell this to someone and it breaks, somebody evacuates a building because you freak out about the mercury spill. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a demonstration of what to do if you break one. So I've taken one of my mercury necklaces here. So I will do something uh, many people would find very crazy. I'm going to go ahead and drop it from eye height onto concrete. And this should break it. It is toughened glass, but this is quite the fall. <laughs> Alright, I don't know if Canyon caught that. You go ahead and zoom in here. You can see. There's a droplet of mercury right there, and the broken glass. Step one is don't panic. Step two, evacuate everyone who's not going to be working on this directly, especially if they have bare feet. Okay. Close doors to the areas which they reside, so as to not get any mercury vapor out into a populated area. Step three is to go ahead and open up any windows or doors that you can to ventilate the area. You see, mercury evaporates slowly. It is a liquid, and all liquids have a vapor pressure and eva evaporate. Fortunately, it's nighttime and it's fairly cool, and at low temperatures, mercury will evaporate much slower. In all conditions, mercury evaporates 16,000 times slower than water. You know, one sixteen thousandth of the vapor pressure. So it's certainly not going to evaporate very quickly. Even still, it's a good idea to get as much ventilation as possible to avoid breathing in any mercury. Now on to step four. That is to grab a broom and sweep the immediate area into a pile and collect any large droplets of mercury which are obvious. Now I've heard that uh, you're not supposed to use a broom because you'll contaminate the broom, but mercury does not absorb onto things, so it's not going to stick to the broom. It's just going to brush it away. And even if you're worried about it, you can just give the broom a wash and some soapy water and you'll be fine. Now that you've swept up all of the immediate area around where you dropped the mercury into a pile, go ahead and scoop up all the material, this is all of the dirt that's on the floor, into a shallow dish. Just be sure that the bullet you're putting it in is something that you don't plan on eating out of anytime soon. <laughs> but now that I've got this uh, immediate area swept up, and I've probably collected about 95% of the mercury that I dropped into this pan, you see now we've got a problem. Mercury splatters. It has a high mass in a small volume, has a high density, and also a very low resistance to flow. So once mercury gets moving, it doesn't like to stop. It's just like a bullet, which means that once that mercury falls, it's going to go as far as it can before stopping. It's just going to keep on bouncing along until it runs into a wall, which means there's mercury potentially as far over as this corner over here. This means that I've got to sweep the entire floor. But before I do that, I'm going to do one more little thing, which is optional, but will definitely improve your cleanup. And here it is, some sulfur powder and some zinc dust. Both of these substances are commonly found in mercury cleanup kits because the zinc will adhere to the mercury, alloy with it, and turn the mercury from a liquid into a solid, an amalgam, which makes it so that it doesn't evaporate anymore. The sulfur will actually react with the mercury vapor, forming mercury sulfide. That, of course, traps the mercury vapor so it no longer evaporates and can over time actually consume the entire mercury droplet, forming it into a form of mercury which is not going to be harmful. So now, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of this onto the floor before I start anything. Now that I've added the zinc to the floor to absorb any rogue droplets of mercury, I'm going to start at one end of the room and work my way to the other. And I want to sweep the entire thing. Get every possible amount of dirt that I can. As a plus, this is a great way to clean the floor. Now that the floor's gotten the best sweeping it's ever had, we've got all of the material in this little pile. But we don't have all of the mercury yet. You see, there's cracks. 
Mercury is a heavy material and likes to settle down to the lowest spot that it can find. So I have this little vacuum here and suck these cracks out. Now that you've vacuumed out all of the little cracks and all the crevices and all of the edges around the walls, go ahead and take the material you got out of the vacuum and add it to your pile. Now you want to vacuum any areas that you couldn't get with a broom. This includes carpeted areas if the mercury happens to get onto a carpeted area. And in fact, you could have used the vacuum on the entire floor, but for me the broom was easier because I've got a little tiny vacuum. Finally, I need to recover the mercury. Mercury is heavy and dense like gold, so I can recover it the same way I would gold in a stream. The wastewater and waste dirt that was panned out can probably safely be disposed of now. I wouldn't recommend dumping it in your garden, but sending it to the city landfill is probably adequate. Depending, of course, how good you are with a gold pan. <laughs> if done correctly, you should be able to separate out even the finest droplets of mercury from the dirt. As you can see, I've got some zinc powder in there, as well as some tiny droplets of mercury, and a larger bit of mercury here. There's a little bit of dirt, and the mercury doesn't seem to want to collect together into a single ball, so I will have to clean it. I have here some muriatic acid, which is hydrogen chloride dissolved in water. I'm going to go ahead and add a small amount of this to the pan to clean the mercury droplets. Hydrochloric acid itself will not dissolve the mercury, but it will dissolve most everything else, allowing the mercury to be clean enough to stick together. Now the cleaned mercury should gobble up all the little mercury droplets into one big mercury bead. The mercury will of course pick up any pieces of metal, such as uh, copper, aluminum, tin, or lead, that was also laying on the floor. As you can see, it's got a piece of aluminum stuck to it right now, and the mercury is eating away at the aluminum as we speak. But now that you've got the mercury pretty much cleaned of all the dirt, it's time to transfer it into a storage vessel like this. Just a closed top container that can hold water and is airtight. As you can see, I've already been using this container to hold mercury. I have a drop of mercury in there already, along with a penny. As you can see, what the mercury does to a penny. It uh, completely coats it. This is basically just my scrap mercury jar. I'm just going to roll this mercury droplet off into there, combine it with it, and I will distill this down at a later date. But now it is safely contained, and I would probably actually buy it from you like this. So that's that. I now have an incredibly clean floor, and I have recovered all of my mercury. Now I hope you guys have all learned that it is completely possible to clean up a mercury spill, and you should not be afraid to do it. There are a few precautions that you would like to take to minimize your mercury exposure, but really, your exposure to mercury shouldn't be very high at all. In fact, mercury at one point was mixed with wax and honey, and people would swallow it to get rid of tapeworms. And the occasional swallowing of mercury is probably without harm. Your body doesn't really absorb it that way. As we've shown earlier, it doesn't dissolve in hydrochloric acid of your stomach, and so it just passes through your system without being absorbed. Also, mercury doesn't absorb through the skin either. So handling it with your bare hands, though it's probably something you shouldn't do, it's not going to be super dangerous to do. I found droplets of mercury that have been in the sidewalk cracks out front of a building at school that had been there for probably 20 years. And they of course hadn't evaporated in that time. But I will be doing some experiments to see if I can figure out the evaporation rate. I want to take some tiny droplets of mercury, put them under a microscope, give it some good ventilation, and check the microscope every few days to see how big the mercury droplet is and see if it evaporates, see if I can get an estimate of the evaporation rate. It may not evaporate at all, because mercury does oxidize a little bit so the oxide coat may get on it soon after it gets exposed. So in order to get a large amount of mercury into the air, you may have to like atomize it and keep dispersing it, which is something that's just not going to happen in any day practice. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.